And welcome in to the Backstage Pass here. It's a TGIF version here. Always love the Friday shows because you never know what's going to happen on a Friday leading into a weekend. <laughs> and sports-wise, it's Conference Championship weekend, of course, for the NFC and AFC. So a lot of the Super Bowl things are kind of going around, predictions, things like that. We'll have more on that once we know Super Bowl 56 is set. Myself and C.J. Garten uh, next week on Outlaw Fantasy. And, of course, the countdown's underway to CRS uh, February 23rd to 25th at the Omni Hotel and probably somewhere else. We'll be at the Omni, and then we get through with that. We'll go to uh, another place to do more shows for you and give you the best coverage out there uh, from a Texas standpoint and hopefully from a Tennessee uh, standpoint out there. Yeah. Brandon Morrell flying solo here. Of course, Jeff Kirsty getting everything ready for CRS. What they do behind the scenes is amazing. And I'm just pleased to welcome in another great artist. I find artists everywhere these days. And seriously, man, you talk about somebody that's paid her dues. And look, she loves whiskey as much as I do. So <laughs> it was a match. We're presented by Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, Hank Jr. Productions. And our good friends at MitchMax.com for that backstage pass swag. Nashville, of course, uh, she knows it, loves it. Uh, Pedro joins us here on the program. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Uh, it's it's getting busy this time of year. <laughs> <Feel that>. <laughs> staying, <laughs> staying busy, of course. And don't forget uh, February 10th, uh, just an icon in country music. John Michael Montgomery is going to stop by here on the uh, backstage pass. So plan your calendars. Uh, for that one too as well. Well, I tell you what, talk about paying your dues and, and tell me your story. You, you know, you mentioned growing up just influences with Fleetwood Mac and Alanis Morissette and and kind of finding who you wanted to be as an artist and kind of, I love your music. There's a little sass, a little soulful into it too, especially this uh, latest single out there, uh, Whiskey Drinker, which I love whiskey. It's across all the platforms. Uh, tell me about <laughs> yourself and, and coming from a small town and going to Nashville and, and that journey kind of in a nutshell. Yeah, so... The the extremely condensed version is I've wanted to do this since I was three years old and basically just kind of decided to make every decision on how I was going to do that. Um, so I'm born and raised in Iowa originally um, and grew up doing theater and band and show choir and just about anything I could get my hands on that involved music. And but outside of that, you know, my parents are big music appreciators and my dad was always kind of into this classic rock and country and my mom was kind of the top 40 queen. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of grew up listening to just a huge hodgepodge of stuff. Yeah. Everything from, you know, Fleetwood Mac and Alanis Morissette and queen to Shania Twain and Reba and Dolly. And um, then you've got my mom who's over here listening to like Lady Gaga and all sorts <laughs> of things. Right. So you kind of twist them all together. And somewhere in that, I think I found my sound. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of artists say this, but you just want to find music that you want to listen to. That was always kind of my biggest thing for how I go into writing songs now mm -hmm. for myself is I wanted to make music that I wanted to listen to. And uh, initially when we wanted to make this record, it was like, you know, I want to sound like Brothers Osborne and Maren Morris and mm -hmm. Shania and all these people. I kind of listed off by 10 different artists and I was like, I want to put them in a melting pot and create Paige Rose. <laughs> Oh, I like that. The melting pot, though, just the words right there, giving it that feel, that blend uh, yeah. of some great artists out there. You know, you mentioned uh, Shania Twain, huge influence, and and definitely, huge. I mean, she's captivated audiences, both large and small, through her career since the 90s and, and beyond. What was it about her that kind of gave you that feeling of her to connect with her from a young age? She wasn't afraid to be her. I mean, that sounds pretty... Mm -hmm. poignant and simple but i mean it's true she always you know growing up i could be fully woman and i could be you know powerful and also soft and i could be all these different things and it was allowed and i kind of grew up just admiring that and wanting that and wanting to be this like fearless girl and in the same breath have you know that not be afraid of your soft side and to tell your stories and to i mean she was always so open with her fans and things like that. I don't know. The more I got to know about her and her story, the more I went into it. I went from dancing in my diapers to man, I feel like a woman to <laughs> writing papers on her in high school. So she was a huge influence to me. You know, we all know this last 20 months and I talked to so many artists here on the program and they kind of tell us, you know, it's about reinventing ourselves or the streaming became important or we picked up an instrument that uh, maybe we hadn't played in a while. We got in the studio, just started writing or recording. Um, kept true to themselves, kept true to what they know, and that being music. How did you have to, or did you have to, uh, kind of reinvent yourself these last 20 months, knowing that the live show was extinct? I mean, it was gone. Yes, yeah, so it's been a really interesting transition. So when we started this record, it was February of 2020. We went into the studio. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. <laughs> and we tracked like all the main stuff, but there's a lot that goes into making a record. And it was my first time doing it. So I didn't really understand what went into it. And, you know, it was kind of like, oh, there's, it's going to be two weeks. We'll go in, we'll cut vocals. And then everyone just take like a two week break. So I remember going into cut vocals on like March 12th, 11th mm -hmm. and 12th. I think we went in back to back days and it was like, just nobody touch each other. Like don't hug, don't whatever. And we'll just kind of waltz in. And I stood in the, my little ISO booth and my producer was on one end of the room and my engineer was on the other end of the room. And everyone was just kind of like yelling at each other to the best of our ability from more than six feet away, like aggressive distances. And I was like, okay, we'll just do that. You comp it together and uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Well, two weeks turned into six months and I was doing live streams on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and trying to do things like that just because I missed performing. I mean, a lot of us in Nashville go from gigging four nights a week to all of a sudden nothing was happening. Yeah. Um, you know, we learned how to write over Zoom, which we all do more now of like mm -hmm. I'm writing with a lot more people in different areas because we can, it's, we have the ability to. So I think in a lot of ways it's, it's been a good learning curve because I also didn't take into account when we started this, that people that I have that are, you know, fans in like Utah or even back home that might want to actually watch my release show someday. So it's, it's definitely changed how I want to do things moving forward in a release show here, you know, and, hiring more of a professional live stream system so people can attend it online as well as in person. And I think it's honestly, I think it's done a lot of really interesting and kind of cool things for the music industry unintentionally. Before we play the first song, I want to go and I, and I pulled this from your website too, because I love this quote you have. And I think it's very fascinating too, especially when I dive into the, the writing process and, and you had talked about um, that added write what you know, and then you kind of said a quote, there, there isn't one song I've put out that I haven't lived, and I hope people can see that, unquote. Tell me about um, just what that means to you internally, what emotions go through you. And I hear that more and more now because people like to write, enjoy the process, know it's a craft. But for you having lived it and then being able to put it into words. Yeah. Uh, so I had a good friend of mine tell me, you have a great skill for writing exactly what you're feeling in that moment. <laughs> and I never really realized that was something I possessed, but I have spent a lot of time, especially the first couple of years of me being here, kind of writing for whatever. I was writing all the time just to write the best song I could think of. And when I really realized that I wanted to chase the artist path in a more aggressive manner than I was, um, I kind of sat down and I was like, okay, what are these songs did I bring to the table? Um, you know, whiskey drinks are, is a great example. I wrote a song about a bad date that I went on, you know, it wasn't like I, we didn't invent it. We didn't, you know, mm -hmm. like, Oh, well, it would be really funny if we wrote about this girl that did it. Like, no, it was me. It was me. I was that girl <laughs> or just the house. You know, my parents mm -hmm. sold my house in Iowa and I mm -hmm. literally got off the phone with my mom and sat down and I wrote that song and about two hours later. And I think that if you write about your life and about what you've lived to me, that's the biggest difference between a songwriter and an artist is an artist has something that we can't help, but we have to share. It's not really a choice to pick. Well, this is just the, the best song. It's like, no, this is this is my life. And I hope that people can see that. And I hope that me living my life can help inspire other people living theirs. Well, I can feel it and definitely see it in the latest uh, single. I love it. Uh, Whiskey Drinkers out there across all the uh, digital platforms came out November 5th. So still time out there to go uh, get you a little something. I still had those Apple iTunes gift cards, whatever, from yeah. Christmas. So definitely <laughs> can kind of go. There you go. Go download it, stream it. Uh, do what you do wherever you uh, listen to music as far as the viewers are concerned. I'm going to turn it over to you. So I know we're going to do a couple songs today. Uh, come back and definitely dive in more on Just a House and, of course, Whiskey Drinker. And then, of course, I also want to ask you about uh, the one you put out in 2018, uh, Brandy. We'll get more into that here in just a little bit here. It's Paige Rhodes. It's the Backstage Pass. And, of course, we'll have a word from Bangtail Whiskey and our good sponsor over at MitchMax.com for that official Backstage Pass merchandise. Go there, and uh, you'll see the, all the selection. I've got my own coffee mug now, so this is pretty cool to, hey, hey. to be able to say that with the, with the logo. <laughs> They're pretty, pretty big, too. It's going to hold about two cups of coffee in a single. Hey. I like a big coffee cup. They're Sweet. underrated. They, they are with the big handles on them too, but they're uh, they're doing good there. And of course, uh, CRS here February 23rd to 25th at the Omni Hotel and somewhere offsite will be uh, doing some live interviews there. And of course, um, 
the best coverage of the music's big event coming up here at the end of February. So it's all yours, Paige, and a grace us with those beautiful vocals, no doubt. Hey. Well, we have to do Whiskey Drinker. We've talked about it. We, we got to do that. <laughs> so we're going to start off with that. Here we go. It's one of my favorites. I used to sip champagne in the corner and leave a lipstick stain on the rim. I had my legs crossed, slips close, waiting on your cue to go. I always went along with what you did. But now I'm over it. So pour me up something strong. Tonight I'll be here till it's cold. Cause Jack knows just what I'm needing. You won't judge me for being a girl who takes a crown on ice. Looks like I'm a whiskey drinker tonight. If you were here, you wouldn't recognize me. I'm saying cheers to who I was before. No more, I want a red dress wearing Levi's instead. Don't care what you think of me no more. No more, no more, no more. Pour me up something strong. Tonight I'll be here till it's cold. Cause Jack knows just what I'm needing. You won't judge me for being a girl who takes a crown on ice. Looks like I'm a whiskey drinker tonight. Tonight. Well, no umbrellas, don't want chasers, nothing frozen, only straight up. I'm not trying to be polite. Two, three. Pour me up something strong. Tonight I'll be here till it's cold. Cause Jack knows just what I'm needing. And you won't judge me for being a girl who takes a crown on it. Judge me for being a girl who takes a crown on ice. Looks like I'm a whiskey drinker tonight. Yeah. A little song the called. The pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And here every day, Monday through Friday, 3.30 to 6.30, back here with Nashville recording artist uh, Paige Rose. You can check her out at pagerosemusic.com. And, of course, that's the latest single on the upcoming EP, Not All Girls, Spring of 22, coming up. Whiskey Drinkers out there across all the uh, digital platforms. And, of course, we'll be there at uh, CRS Countdown, February 23rd to 25th at the uh, Omni Hotel. And doing something off-site, too, as well, which I'm getting more information as the day's <laughs> pass on too so we'll probably catch up with Paige at crs at some point uh during that week can't wait to fly in there february 21st and enjoy a uh, week there with uh, some of music's best and brightest in entertainment no doubt about it too as well and you know the, the places to eat Paige, which we're going to talk about later too i've got to get some different types I am of your gal uh, on food cuisine. recommendations <laughs> <laughs> you be that person there too as well uh great performance of it so i guess let's kind of dive into this a little bit more whiskey drinker on the upcoming ep due out spring of 22 uh not all girls which is coming up too as well do you guys have a release date and how much fun was it to put together uh that particular single that single was a ton of fun for me because I, this was my first, like, I call it my first big kid single. Like it was the first one that I pitched out to radio and and did a, like a lyric video for and just learned so much like a merch line with. I mean, I learned a ton mm -hmm. in the process of that. Um, we have another single coming out, hopefully late March. We don't have an exact date yet, but it is a duet. I can tell you that. Um, I'm very, very excited about it. And we're, that will have its own music video and all sorts of other fun stuff coming along with it. But the whole record as a unit was a big learning curve for me. I don't have a team. It's it's a team of one right mm -hmm. now. So I spent a lot of time filling around Googling how to do things and asking friends, how did you do this? Who did you talk to? What did you, mm -hmm. how did, how do you go about this? <laughs> so it's, it's been a learning process all the way around. <laughs> the way I started this thing here, I was like, yeah, how do we do this? What do we do? How do we get on the air? And a few people who had done it, plus a buddy of mine who'd been in television and, of course, the uh, computers and the equipment. And it's all about the, the technology that you have. And, of course, like you said, Googling and getting things uh, right to, to fit, fit your needs of your, your listeners and your audience, too, as well. Tell me about um, – we talked about keeping busy a little bit, of course, last year. But um, y'all put out a great uh, single, Just a House, that I became a huge fan of, too, at the same time uh, in 2021. Tell me all about that one, too. And I guess the – uh, the writing, the production, of course, the the mix and mastering, it came out really, really good. I thought you did a great job with it. Thank you. Um, I like to call this my little impulse release. Uh, <laughs> Just a House was not a plan to to write or whatever. Whiskey Drinker we wrote back in 2018. So there was a clear thought process about how that was going to be put together and then the body of work that was going to go with it. Um, Just a House I wrote in, I think, May, and I released uh -huh. it in June. Wow. So... Yeah, I like to call it my little impulse release. Um, my mom <laughs> called me one night. They decided they were going to sell the house in Iowa. And we moved in that house when I was two. Um, I just had my 25th birthday at the time. And uh, so we had been there for a while. And mm -hmm. uh, when my mom told me they were going to sell it, she would, just kept saying, honey, you know, it's just a house. She kept saying that over and over again on the phone. And I thought that was garbage. <laughs> because it, to me, it was all I knew. Like it was home base. Um, cause none of my family's in Iowa. I've got family in Oklahoma and in Minnesota. So whenever I fly home, quote unquote, I was never really flying home, home mm -hmm. to me. So them selling the house kind of felt like an end of an era for me in a lot of ways. And so hearing her say that it was just a house over, I, that was all I could focus on when we hung up the phone and I walked over to my couch and the song literally wrote itself. I feel like that was a song um, it, it happens very rarely for songwriters, but it's that was one that would I knew it was bigger than me. And I put up a little video on Instagram as kind of a one off thing. And people kept asking me about it. And I reached out to a friend of mine and I was like, hey, I really want to do like a professional music video for this. Like, can mm -hmm. it just a little acoustic thing? Can we sit down and do this? Um, do you mind if you like mix and master it? And I can put it up on Spotify. And he was like, no, I had no idea when I asked this dude if I could film in his entry of his house, this little mm -hmm. video, what it was going to turn into. I mean, I just found out that it was number 92 on the Hot 100 songs Ooh. of the year for my hometown yeah. station. And I mean, it it just 
ended up picking up all this traction for just being a little song that I just wanted people to be able to listen to and love the way that mm-hmm. I did. Well, it came out really good. And that's one of those that I connect to. And I got, I guess I got a feel for it too, because of uh, growing up childhood and, and kind of just knowing what, how important a house meant to, you know, just the person in general, the family, things like that, which we do have one in the family. It's still here. And we, we try to go out to it at least two or three times a month. And we went through some tough, um, disasters down here the hurricanes that come mm-hmm. through texas and we we remodeled it a couple of times and you know we had to demolish it remodel it things like that or contract it out still today it's standing and uh my grandma has passed on and grandpa too but we still keep that in the family keep honoring them the way that they they would like to be honored with with the house so that's why i was able to i love that <clears throat> connect with that and have that special story to to share to listeners no doubt and i'll honor them till till i'm done so that's you know it's uh pretty pretty amazing that a song can connect to so many people i can see why it was and i believe it was on uh was it uh i say k sucks k-s-u-x yes uh, one of five seven K-S-U-X. yeah there you go i was probably not to say you know what i mean k-s-u-x I mean, hey, yes i get it our uh airport is fly sucks s-u-x it's fly sue that i know that that's what it is but it's sue it is i know what you mean the running joke <laughs> But yeah, it's KSUX uh, 1057 is where it debuted too for you. And, and great, great um, single out there too at the same time. Let's do another one here with you. And definitely uh, looking forward to coming back. I want to talk about, you know, the different venues that are opening up again there in Nashville. I know you've done the listening room, the basement, sold out shows here and there. So I want to talk to you about that now that we can say fully CRS is opening. And of course, now people are getting gigs again and getting back out there. Uh, just so excited for you guys to get out there and do what you uh, what you do best. So I'm gonna turn it over to you again, and uh, I'm guessing just the house. Yes. Here we go. Of course. <laughs> Here we go. There's a cracking table. From when I tried to make it a stage A worn-out chair from watching too many football games The countertop where I did my best to get straight A's In the living room where we always said grace I never thought that would change Well, yeah, I know There's more than material things, but you don't know what I learned in this place. Like family gets you through all the highs and lows. And it's hard, but some things you've got to love and let go. There's life bigger than that town, and I know it's just a house. But it'll always be my home With the back fence that I tried to climb When I couldn't find the key The driveway where I figured out love Was more than a backseat and when I first yelled at God cause he wouldn't answer me It built me up piece by piece And yeah, I know there's more than material things But you don't know what I learned in this place Like family gets you through all the highs and lows and it's hard, but some things you've got to love and let go. There's life bigger than that town, and I know it's just a house, but it'll always be my own. And yeah. There's more than material things, but you don't know what I learned in that place. Like family gets you through every high and low. 
and it's hard, but some things you gotta love and let go. There's life bigger than that town, and I know it's just a house, but it'll always be my home. Oh, I know life's bigger than that town, and yeah. It's just a house, but it'll always be home. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And there'll be a glass of that tonight in my house here <laughs> in Texas, no doubt about it. But uh, man, you know, I think back to this every day. I'm going to tell you this too, Paige, share a story with you. So lucky to do this five days a week and get to go to the... <laughs> Best city in the world, no doubt, Nashville, Tennessee. You guys are just super talented, yourself included. And, man, Thank I love you. doing this show and giving you guys just another platform to uh, share your music, your thoughts, your ideas on, no doubt about it. And that's the reason it's songs like that that make this worthwhile, no doubt. So <laughs> it's just uh, Thank thanks for making a, a beautiful piece of art out there. Just a house and, of course, Whiskey Drinker. On the upcoming EP, looking forward to it, uh, Not All Girls, in spring of 22, back here with Paige Rose. And, of course, uh, next week, some uh, good shows out there, too, as well. Be, be a lookout for Tuesday. Looking forward to uh, Darcy Donovan stopping by. You might remember her from Anchorman and, of course, the Crypto Queen. She's out there. She'll be joining us next week, talking about a lot of cool things. And then February 10th, uh, John Michael Montgomery. And somewhere in February, J.J. French from the band Twisted Sister is going to be joining us here on the uh, Backstage Pass. Looking forward to those uh, great shows. And just got word today, uh, you might remember she had a big, big hit back in 04. Uh, Julie Roberts is going to come by and uh, spend some time with us too as well on the show. So definitely looking forward to that. Plus sharing some time with our CRS guest and Paige at the time there. Uh, you know, I love your story. We've talked so much about it too. I do have to ask you about this because um, such a great, great artist. Um, you had a chance to uh, attend an event. Now correct me if I'm wrong here. You honored Lucinda Williams. Um, I did. What, I mean, God, you know, we do our homework here on the show. So you knew that. You did. <laughs> Um, and I want to say, was this in Boston? And tell me all about this because uh, fantastic talent. I mean, obviously, anybody that wins a Grammy is a super talent. Uh, what was this like and what emotions went through you? That was <laughs> not something I expected you to ask me about. Um, <laughs> that was a life-changing <laughs> event for me. Um, mm -hmm. That show, so we were, for college, my graduation, we did – a commencement concert is something that they do every year where we honor the people that are receiving the honorary doctorates for the year. Um, it's a big thing. Everybody auditions. I had not made any of the singer showcases or anything like that at school. So I kind of auditioned on a whim thinking I probably wouldn't get selected to do it. Uh, for some reason I did. And <laughs> Um, I got picked to honor Lucinda Williams and car wheels on a gravel road, no less. And ended up being a duet with a good friend of mine, um, Carly Bartholomew, who's also a great musician. Wow. And it was so much fun. We kind of got a chance to mash up two of her songs. And uh, I ended up doing obviously the car wheels on a gravel road, but it was my first arena show. I mean, there were 7,000 people there. And I had to sit there and I was like, don't fall. I am the clumsiest person alive. The whole time, <laughs> that's what I was worried about, was falling on the stage. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's it's crazy. A crazy look out into the audience and see like Lionel Richie, Neil Portnow, Lucinda Williams. I mean, these people just uh-huh. sitting in front of you and you're like, am I qualified? I feel like <laughs> these should be reversed. I should not be the one up here. <laughs> I love that too. So I'll tell you, we, we dig here on this show. We dig. You did. <laughs> keep it going and find little things to talk about too. So myself, my team, we always try to pull something out. So definitely try to be prepared for you guys. Not always. It, sometimes those things will catch you off guard, no doubt. But I like it. Uh, hell of an honor and congratulations on that uh, success, no doubt about it too. Especially, uh, I mean, good God, she's been around a long time. And Lucinda Williams, everybody knows who that is, no doubt about it. Of course, you said Lionel Richie and just a great talent sitting in the audience there too as well. Uh, let me ask you about this. I guess when you're out there performing, uh, people still kind of gravitate to cover songs. And I always tell people, mm-hmm. I know you're kind of your own artist. You play your your music, but some people are like, you know, play this, play this. What's some of your top two or three cover songs to perform if, if you do that live? Yeah, so I do a lot. of I do a ton of cover gigs around town. Um, it, it kind of varies. Any man of mine has been like my go-to karaoke <laughs> song slash what I, I mean. It's always the song that I pick out of a hat whenever I'm going up on stage. Uh, probably one of my other favorite songs that I get to cover. There's two of them. Benny and the Jets, which mm-hmm. I have since formed with my band to have them do it with me too. I used to just do it acoustic and it was because some guy requested it off of a limb <laughs> once. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay, I'll fake it. Didn't realize mm-hmm. I was going to love it so much. And then um, if anyone's ever seen me at a full band show, I end every single set with The Middle by Jimmy Eat World. Okay. Um, right. A very different version of it. But that was the very first song I ever learned to play on guitar. And so for me to end every set with it, it just kind of feels like a nice little homage to where I got started. And yeah, yeah. I like it. I makes you think about a little Sioux City, Iowa, which I've never been up there too. But I imagine this time of year, it's a little cold, right? It's up cold. There. It's cold. It's cold. Lots of snow, probably. I haven't been yet this year, but yeah, it's cold. Just a little bit frigid. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, the actual, we, we had here in Texas weather today, we'd had the kind of the back and forth and the, you know, one day 65. And of course the lows would get down to, I don't know, 40s and nine or 50s. And the next day, the morning would start out in the 40s and go to about 60. So it's kind of back and forth here, but it is winter and it is Texas. And of course it's whether you just never know what's going to happen. I'm hoping that week of CRS, we actually have a little bit of sunshine. Can we ask for that? I just I'm hoping. To. We had some snow flurries today, and I was <laughs> oh, like, I'm no. over it. I moved south or more south to mm-hmm. not deal with this. So more snow flurries. I'm like, I better bring, you know, I better bring some winter clothes. I got the suitcase yeah. over here in the back. Layers. layers. Might I suggest layers? Because it'll be <laughs> like 20 when you first get up, and then it will be like 50 in the afternoon. You're going to be yeah. very confused and... <laughs> You know, I'm not Layers. very good. I mean, Layers. I, mean clothes. I can't stand it. I've got jackets and, like you said, long sleeve shirts. But yeah. uh, uh, the good thing is, we'll we'll definitely have to pack for that and make that uh, pretty much a uh, a topic of concern. Talk with the team and follow the weather forecast going into uh, that week before, I guess, to see what it's going to be like. Too. All right, I tell you what, I might actually have you play one of those cover songs if you oh. want to. And I want to come back and talk about because I almost forget. I, I lose myself on my show sometimes, but there's so many good talking points. That I have some I never get to, but I want to talk about Brandy and okay. get uh, the full specifics on that and the kind of the breakdown on uh, the writing process and recording process of it. Um, yeah. I was come back 2018, I believe you put that out. It was. Um, let's do another one. And hey, dealer's choice. You get to choose. Dealer's choice as I frantically try to tune my guitar back. <laughs> I'm going to do, we'll do some Benny and the Jets. We'll uh, right. keep things up. We just did a sad song. Yeah, no, no more time for some sad songs. <laughs> I got to put this comment on the screen for you real quick. Joanne was saying here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm sure it is. So thank you for listening, Joanne. We appreciate that too as well. And definitely. Paige, it's all yours. Here we go. Let's go. Wake it, shaking loose together The spotlight's hidden something that's been known to change the weather We'll kill the fatted calf tonight, so stick around You're gonna hear electric music, solid walls of sound Shake candy around, yeah, 
have you seen him yet? Oh, but the soul space sound. Bu -bu 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 Benny and the Jets. Oh, but the weird and the wonderful. Oh, Benny, she's really keen. She's got electric boots, a Moe suit, you know, I read it in a magazine. Oh, b -b -b Bentley and the Jets. And hey, kids, plug into the faithless. Maybe they're blinded, but Bentley makes them ageless. We shall survive. Let us take ourselves along. Where we fight our parents into the streets to prove who's right and who's wrong. Say, can the Irani have you seen them yet? Oh, but the soul space down. Ba 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 Benny and the Jets. Oh, but the weird and the wonderful. Oh, Benny, she's really keen. She's got electric boots, a Moe suit, you know, I read it in a magazine, oh, b b Bentley and the Jets. Yeah, the only downside is uh, we're missing a killer solo moment, but that's all right. Have you seen them yet? Oh, but the soul space down. B -b 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 Benny and the Jets. Oh, but the weird and the wonderful. Oh, Benny, she's really keen. She's got electric boots, a Moe suit, you know, I read it in a magazine. Oh, B -b -b Benny and the Jets. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Yep, the class of that's coming up tonight here on the Backstage Pass, and of course the weekend, the conference championship games on Sunday. And I tell you, Paige, I won a little bit of money last week. I'm playing it a little bit differently this weekend on the the football games so definitely uh the last two weeks the tennessee titans have let me down and so the dallas cowboys so i lost money there but yeah that's wagering for you too as well not that i do a crazy amount of it but uh me and a buddy of mine we have a little fun it's like hey. some people going to the casino and pulling the slots that's our kind of entertainment and as long as we do it responsibly that's a good thing. All fair so, game. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully the Rams will do a little bit better job this weekend. Of course, I hate the Rams. You see what fan I am, the Arizona ah, Cardinals. Yep. But uh, they took us out in the first round, so we get ready for next season. And the Titans just let a lot of people down, too. So It's been a rough uh, season. <laughs> <laughs> As well, getting the number one seed. And, uh, yeah, I did not expect the uh, Bengals to come in there and do – 
what they did, but uh, they did it. So <laughs> move on to play the Chiefs this weekend, conference championship. Uh, of course, we'll have a Super Bowl show coming up next week with myself and CJ on Outlaw Fantasy. Always a cool show to put together with CJ uh, Garten, Nashville recording artist CJ Garten, who, by the way, week from the day has another single coming out in preparation for his vinyl album coming up there in March and, of course, all across the uh, streaming platforms out there. Love that cover. Uh, song is great. You mentioned the solo part right there, Benny and the Jets. So it's, <laughs> it's good stuff. All right, let's get into a little rapid fire. I love doing this. Always to kind of close yeah. the show, get to know you more on a personal basis. All right, favorite cartoons, movies growing up? I'm assuming there were multiple ones, right? Uh, yeah, my favorite cartoon. So I spoke about the Shania Twain thing. Um, it's Flintstones was always on. I was a Flintstones kid. <laughs> it's the dad at Flintstones and SpongeBob. That was all I needed. That's it, right? That was it. <laughs> movies. Uh, what type of movies? Um, as a kid, very different. I don't. I honestly couldn't tell you as as a kid. My favorite movie now is How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. Yeah, that's a good it's, one. Yeah, it's always been my favorite. <laughs> it's always fun too and i've done everything netflix i'm sure everybody with uh staying more, more at home and stuff like that too and all that stuff and it's just yeah between that and football i've watched about everything and i tell you what i got into lately was the uh, remake of the karate kid the uh, cobra kai Ooh, it was actually pretty cool to watch on netflix uh it'll get you hooked and, and definitely is a black belt in martial arts which i i do and have, have, have done for six years uh they it really got me into it too. it still has two three four of the original actors Ooh, I just finished the, Yellowstone, so I'm looking for I'm looking for something new. I'm watching okay. Friends for like the 400th time right now. But <laughs> it's like it comes on TBS. It's pretty easy to, to watch yeah. a lot of the reruns of Friends too, which is still a classic show. You know what, what's funny is speaking of that too, they still make gobs of money on shows. Oh, I'm reruns. sure they have to. I'd love they to have be to. pocketbook. Like you said, <laughs> checks come into their mailbox and pull it out and go, wow. Rerun, easy, easy. Easy <laughs> mailbox money. We love to see it. <laughs> That's easy mailbox money, no doubt. All right, let's do some food questions. I uh, mentioned, what do I absolutely have to try? Uh, no, I don't. And of course, I love all types of cuisine. When I get up there in in, in Nashville for that week, uh, there's some people that want to take me here, go here. What do I absolutely have to have for CRS restaurant? Wise? I feel like you have to have hot chicken while okay. you're in Nashville. Um, <laughs> just Hattie because Bees? Hattie Bees is my favorite. Is your people- favorite? <laughs> People, the, everyone's got their pick. Um, Party Fowl is a close second in my okay. universe. People love princes, but I'm kind of a wuss, and that's like actually spicy. <laughs> so, you know, you just kind of got to figure out. But you got to get in Nashville because I've had hot chicken other places, and it's not the same. It's, it's, the, it, it's a breading. It's a seasoning. It's not a sauce. Yeah. <laughs> it's there, was a, there was one that opened here in, in, in Beaumont where I'm at here in Texas, and it was called Nashville Hot Chicken. And I'm sure they're up there, too, originating out of the, the great state, the great city there. No, the Texas, it didn't pass my, my taste test. It didn't. I'm going to no. tell you as a Texan, don't come, don't come here and eat barbecue. We've got like some <laughs> decent places, but my sister lives in Texas. I know the kind of barbecue that yeah, you have you're... access to. <laughs> we, are what... gonna, we are going to make you sad. It'll make you sad. Well, somebody was, to, they said barbecue or something one night. I don't know what the, the place was, but I'm sure it's, you're probably right. It's, it's the other way around. Hot Ed chicken Lee... made me sad here. I was like, if you're going to do it, Ed Lee's is my favorite in town, but. Okay. But still, it's Texas. Okay. All right. See, I was worried about that, too. Now, let me ask you about this. Pizza, when you're ordering one just for yourself, what what toppings go on it? Uh, If it's just for me, it is pepperoni, green olive, and mushroom. It has been the same since I was a kid. Now, is there a good – I heard somebody say five-point pizza. Is that correct? Five points is good. Five points is good if you're looking for, like, pizza pizza. Um, but my favorite pizza joint is DeSano's. It's wood fire pizza in town. Ooh, I actually like some of that. that Is that like got the brick oven kind of feel Mm -hmm. to that wood fired? Okay. So we're going to have to text you. We got one near the hotel too. (laughs) We'll have to do that again. Text you and be like, Hey, what did she say? Oh, DeSano's. Okay. Gotcha. That was the one that tries to stick. My dad, my dad used to flip restaurants when I was a kid. So I'm very much into food. (laughs) I know a lot about it. Is there now? I, I lost a bet to CJ on on the air. Well, I guess, and of course, during the um, it was one of those straight up ones that uh, Dallas would beat San Francisco uh. a couple of weeks ago with the Cowboys. And I've learned not to bet on the Cowboys anymore. This was just kind of a friendly bet. So the bet was a steakhouse, and I can't do like Ruth Chris and some of the fancy ones because of budget and stuff like that. But he hey. wants to go out for a steak, and so I owe him the dinner because I lost the bet, and San Francisco won the game. Where where should I go for steak for for Nashville? Steak on a budget. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you make me think steak on a budget. And I'm like, we're going to get one for like $20, $25. Probably going to be hard, but. <laughs> yeah, because I'm out here. I'm like, oh, Kane Prime is like the best steakhouse in Nashville. <laughs> but it is 
the best steak. But I'm gonna Honestly, drop a little bit there. Yeah. It's it's a chain. I used to work there when I first went to town. Firebirds. Um, okay. It's everything served on a wood fire grill. I know that it's a chain. No one come for me for that. But it's delicious, and I. <laughs> Honestly, miss working there strictly for the food. I mean, it was so the food is so Ooh, good, you can't go wrong with yeah. anything there. Wow. Well, and one of my first days in town, I get to go to um to uh, Blake Shelton's bar. The old red has one yeah. of my artists that's gonna play out there too, as well. One of the artists I represent. So we're gonna have a little get together out there and do some stuff and mingle and stuff like that too. They say the food's pretty good at Old Red's. So I've not tried there's, it, but there's a handful of places. Uh Old Red does have really good food. Luke's has really good food. Okay. There's like some places like I was shocked for, I mean, I, I just expect Broadway bars to not have good food, but <laughs> there's a handful of places down there. You're like, okay, all right. Now, when you're having one of those rough days, is, is there a, and maybe we've already talked about it. Is there a go-to food or beverage that you're like, oh, it's been a rough day. I need to go get that to make me feel better. I feel like my fail safe is Chipotle. <laughs> it's Chipotle. <laughs> I'm just like, there's one like five minutes from my apartment. So it's just convenient. And I'm like, I've had a long day. I don't want to cook. I don't want to do whatever. Yeah. I order it. I literally, I hit a button on my app and all I have to do is drive up to go get it. Do the, um, that's what most people are doing these days. Curbside pickup. Yep. Just yep. hit that button that app and, and yep. you're ready for it too. All right. Let me do this one. Uh, Bucket. Now you've done the listening room we talked about. And of course the basement, some great sold out shows there too, especially everybody knows the listening room in that great town there. Um, is there a kind of a dream um, venue for you to play uh, that you're like, you know, as I go further in my career, I've got to go and play my songs on this stage. There's a handful. Um, the one that I think is the next step anyways is the Bluebird. I've never oh, yeah. done that. Um, I've been inside of it twice. I've had a song I've written been played there by somebody else. But yeah, I would love to sit in the round and play the Bluebird. Um, Ooh, I like that. I like that. Now, what about uh, put play inside? Is there a bucket list vacation that you're like, you know, my lifetime, I have to go here just for fun. I would love to go to Morocco. That's, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I, my sister went and just looking at all of her pictures, I'm like, man, that. And I would also, I would love, my grandfather was stationed in Germany and I would like to go to the places that he was stationed in and kind of see things from his side. Those are two I've always wanted to do. I like that too, especially look at Europe and to the train ride around town yeah. this is one of the best ones to do. And of course, uh, Morocco, you know, it's not one that I thought about too, but that's, that's a place I could say bucket list and check that. And, and speaking of this now, you, you probably go there. If you woke up in the morning, say there's $20 million in Pedro's Rose's bank account. What's the first thing you do? with it? I'd pay off my guitars. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Clear some debt. And buy a vehicle that actually works. <laughs> it actually works. Yeah. That's, that's what I said about eight, nine years ago. I got my first truck and I bought it and I was like, I still feel good. Still outside, still running uh, pretty good. And I've kept some good maintenance on it, but I did buy the truck full brand new. So I was like, you know, mine. I drove those vehicles that didn't run. They didn't work worth a crap. I did. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, we call him Sebastian. That's what I've so lovingly named him. He does get me from point A to point B. Sometimes it's more of a gamble than others. <laughs> All right. So let's say Pedro's gets a phone call. She could be a contestant on any game show out there. Uh, what game show would you pick? And it could be something old or something around today. Oh, Family Feud. See, you're one of the easiest ones to answer that question. People are like, game shows? I'm not a game show person. I don't watch them now. For me, it would oh, be I would luck. love to watch my family try to pull that together. <laughs> like, that would be a riot. <laughs> It would. And I'd say just to, for me, I always love the no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop and press your luck would be something I love to do and just enjoy that uh, particular, particular game show. And Elizabeth Banks is doing a great job uh, hosting that as of right now. I still miss some of the older uh, stuff they did back in the late 80s to early 90s, but that was one of the classic ones. And I guess the second one for me would be Price is Right. Seems to be a popular oh, yeah. answer uh, here. Uh, they're like, hey, free trip to Los Angeles and I don't My, know, you honestly, know, the game's going to win some money. That's a good thing. The second one I would probably do is Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> which sounds so backwards, but my everyone in my family is weirdly also into Wheel of Fortune, so I would <laughs> I like take a nice stab at the dark there. <laughs> I like that. All right, tell me this one. Hey, what's next? I know Not All Girls is coming out uh, spring here in, in 2022. Have you guys kind of gotten a feel of the drop date? Obviously, we talked about uh, Whiskey Drinker being on that particular album, the singles out across all the platforms. What's next for Patreons? 
So next for Paige Rose is we got a duo out coming out, hopefully, like I said, March, um, with the record to follow in May is the Ooh, plan. Okay. Right. Um, so the record will be out, yeah, early spring, and then we'll have some visualizers and some songs that didn't make the record, but I wanted to make the cut. So um, there'd be a little like a little acoustic things like just a house. I'm I'm really excited. This has been a labor of love and a lot of songs that I adore, and I can't wait for them to finally be out. Myself included, and I tell you what, I'm looking forward to meeting you face to face in uh, Music City. Looking forward to just uh, man hanging out, enjoying some of those restaurants you talked about. Uh, the hard work has definitely paid off for the show here. We get a chance to do something of a lifetime. I know people would would um, just clamor over, and I'm looking forward to this uh, February 23rd to 25th, Omni Hotel, and doing some stuff offsite with a great lineup of great artists, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Paige, I appreciate the time again. Whiskey drinkers out there across all the platforms. Uh, thanks for being a part of what we have. And of course, uh, you know, you come back anytime and we'd love to hang out at CRS with you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You got it. PageRoseMusic.com. And of course, Whiskey Drinker is out there across all the uh, digital platforms next week. Uh, Darcy Donovan, you might know her from Anchorman. She's going to stop by. She's also the crypto queen. Looking forward to asking her plenty, plenty of questions about that. Uh, February 10th, John Michael Montgomery and, uh, Man, there's just so much more. I know Julie Roberts may stop by. Uh, JJ French from Twisted Sister. February is looking to be a good month. And of course, that CRS, Craig Campbell, John Barry, Exile, Dallas Remington. And uh, there's just so much more. I can't even, I got to look at the calendar and figure out what's going on. And Paige Rhodes. Paige Rhodes will be there hopefully if we get our offsite yeah. <laughs> broadcast <laughs> set up to as well. Uh, past the Omni, of course, and we'll do some stuff offsite there. So be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned to the socials, the Backstage Pass, the YouTube channel, and, of course, at Backstage Pass 409 uh, on Facebook and, of course, everywhere you can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iHeart and Apple Podcasts. We'll talk to you guys next week, Monday, a cool show. The Flat River Band are going to stop by. You'll, you'll want to check out these guys, great harmonies, and, of course, a great group uh, bringing some of that nitty-gritty dirt band kind of music back to the show. So looking forward to that. Uh, Flat River Band Monday, Darcy Donovan on Tuesday. Thanks to Bangtail Whiskey, Hank Jr. Productions, and MitchMax.com. We'll talk to you guys next week, Monday, January 31st. Isn't it hard to believe? The last month, last day of January, it's over. Hard to believe. I can't even know, Don't know where it's going. Don't know where it's going. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week on the Backstage Pass. Until then, uh, check it out if you missed it this week. Uh, we had John Schneider and Brooke Burke stop by. So if you want to check out those interviews, feel free to do that. We'll talk to you guys Monday with the Flat River Band on the Backstage Pass. Until then. Uh, for Jeff Kirsty, Nick Karen, the entire team, we'll talk to you Monday. See you then.